Welcome, and thanks for joining me on this intrepid journey as we explore and uncover mysterious and elusive tales of some of the world's most famous lost and forgotten treasures. There's something about treasure and the act of seeking it that has intrigued humanity since time began. From ancient rituals, to buried pirate treasure, to hordes of fascinating and mystical artifacts, acquired through war and brutal conquests, through to tracing our history in order to understand our past. I have long been fascinated by treasure and the journeys in which humanity has long embarked on in order to acquire it. The search for historical clues, precious materials, and immense knowledge. But for me, it's more about the immersive stories than the riches and power sought out by the explorers who seek such treasures. Because for the majority, it's only the stories, myths and legends that in the end, remain. While the rest is lost to history. And in some way, it's fascinating in itself, as it opens the doors for further stories to be retold. So you see, the real treasures are the stories themselves. In this episode, we'll be exploring and unveiling a brief story, one that shrouds the lost and forgotten El Dorado treasure. And on that note, let's embark on this cryptic and elusive story together. We've all heard of El Dorado, also commonly referred to as the Lost City, which has for centuries evaded all of those who have gone in search of it. Now, you might be tempted to visualize El Dorado as something that depicts a grand city of gold temples, grand monuments and gold paved roads that maneuver throughout a lavish city, constructed entirely of precious gold, one which remains shrouded in mystery. And you might be surprised and excused by believing this, if you go by account of what you read and see in blockbuster films, TV shows, comics and even in video games. Looking closer at the legend of El Dorado as history reports, it might just tell a slightly different story. First, let's take a peek into the myth and legend of the mystical and elusive El Dorado and try to make some sense of it. The origin story of El Dorado is noted to have been first reported in Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries, the rumored location of which is said to have been located somewhere hidden in South America. And although the location is widely disputed by multiple sources, all the stories lead to similar accounts of a place rich in treasures, culture and mystery. One of the earliest and most recognized origin story accounts of the legend of El Dorado was first documented after Juan de Castellanos, a Spanish soldier who became a Catholic priest, mentions El Dorado in part of a verse of text most likely written sometime around the 1570s in the history of Spanish heroism in the Americas, and as also quoted in the 1541 text of Morning El Dorado, the writings of Gonzalo Fernandez de Oviado. Both tales telling of a chief of a Muisca tribe who inhabited a large plateau high up on the eastern range of the Andes, a place we have now come to know as Colombia. The stories similarly tell that once a year, the tribal chief would be stripped down to his bare skin, doused in turpentine and a sticky earth substance from head to toe, before being completely covered in a gold dust, thus the birth of the name El Dorado, the literal translation of which means the Golden One, also referred to as El Hombre Dorado, the Golden Man, as well El Rey Dorado, the Golden King. According to the accounts of both Castellanos and Obiado, the chief, after blinging himself up, would mount a raft made entirely of rushes, embellished with the most attractive items the tribe had in their possession, also bearing four lit braziers which burned moke, the incense of the period, along with resins and other native perfumes. The chief was also accompanied by four other principal chiefs, all of whom were also stripped to their bare skin and adorned with bracelets, pendants and earrings all made of precious gold. Before the ritual took place, however, 
the Heer Chief was said to have secluded himself for some time in a dark, nearby cave, without women, forbidden to eat salt, and not permitted to venture out into daylight. Preceding the sacred ritual, the chief and his representatives would sail into the middle of Lagoon Guatavita, a small, almost circular lagoon, while on the banks of the lagoon, additional braziers stood alert during the ceremony and were said to black out the light of day. Meanwhile, the native people sang loudly as they looked on, as the raft arrived at the lagoon centre where a banner was raised to call the song to silence. The chief would then make a sacred offering of gold, emeralds and precious stones to the demon god by whom the native people of the time worshipped, before submitting himself by submerging in the lagoon, signalling the beginning of the traditional ceremony and the following appointment of a new ruler. The alternative to the more accepted origin story dated 1541, approximately 20 years after Cortes conquered the Aztecs and eight years after the Incan emperor had been murdered by the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro. The alternate version speaks of the myth of El Dorado. The accounts take place this time in Quito of northern Ecuador, an area which was conquered at the time of the Spanish eradication of the Incas. The story tells of El Dorado as being a great lord, or monarch, who went about his days covered in fine gold that was as fine as salt. The man's reasoning? That to be adorned in anything less than gold was less beautifying, and that being adorned in gold was an extraordinary thing, that it was unusual and represented wealth. And, as you would think by today's standards, would state the obvious. Around the same time of 1541, a Spanish conquistador by the name of González Pizarro rounded up a small regiment of several hundred men. As the tale goes, setting off this time from Quito, Ecuador in pursuit of the location of the mythical and legendary El Dorado King of Gold. However, in his own memoirs of the tale, claims El Dorado was actually a lake, while another known myth described by a chronicler depicts it as actually being a valley. Both ideas that stray from a legend of a glittering chief of gold, only adding to the elusive mystery. Either way, Pizarro's exploration was met with great famine, hardship and misery, and during the expedition to find the location of El Dorado, he tortured and interrogated the local natives for answers. Though he was unsuccessful in his attempts and discovered nothing at the time, in spite of discovering the River Coca, an area just south of the equator, now known to us as Northern Ecuador. Soon his expedition began to stagger and become desperate. Though, along the way, Pizarro had heard rumours from a local disgruntled tribal chief by the name of Della Cola, who had heard of the atrocities Pizarro had undertaken on his native people. And so he misinformed Pizarro of large populations downriver, telling of lords who were in possession of food and great wealth. And with that, Pizarro ordered for a boat to be built that would carry supplies and a party of men downstream, while the remaining men would take horses and make their way along the shore. The expedition travelled for 43 days, finding little food and no populations, at which point one of Pizarro's men, Francisco de Orellana, volunteered to take the boat and a small group of men to seek supplies and return, so the expedition could continue forward. However, Orellana did not find food, and ultimately, nor did he return, instead discovering the Amazon, which at the time they knew as the Marinon which he and his band of men sailed down for many months, only to reach the Atlantic in 1542. Another dead end, almost literally. Now, most typical search parties comprised of mainly poor Spanish men, originating from Andalusia, Castile and Extremadura, who all appeared to begin their journeys in Seville, passing through San Luca de Barrameda, where the Guadalguivier River runs into the Atlantic most likely the location where the majority of searchers set off on their travels to South America. Pizarro's expedition was said to be the leading attempt to locate El Dorado, though once news of a land flourishing with gold travelled home and abroad, many others went in search as well. And it wasn't just the Spanish who ventured to seek out the legend of El Dorado. These large searcher groups also included the Dutch, the Fleming, the German, Italian, Albanian, English and the Scots among other groups. 
It is said that during the 1530s, the Germans were largely the most active group of searchers, with several expeditions scouring the region during that time in their search for gold. Mainly due to the fact that in 1528, the Emperor Charles V, who owed the Wessler banking family of Augsburg 143,000 florins, and unable to repay his debt, Charles licensed the province of Venezuela to the Wessler family, whilst retaining a 20% stake on any treasure should it be located, as well as an equal stake on any slaves acquired along the way, an agreement that would last through till 1546. Either way, it is said that only one German-led expedition led by a man named Ambrosius Ehinger was one of the first to actually recover gold, about 184 kilograms though it's believed this gold was mostly acquired through extortion and violence, an expedition that almost cost the lives of almost all that travelled in the group, including Ehinger himself. After suffering extensive casualties, Ambrosia and the remaining survivors of the group from the near-death two-year excursion returned to the Venezuelan capital, Coro, where they revealed they had buried the acquired gold hoard beneath a tree. Unfortunately for Ambrosia, it was never recovered, and so ended another expedition revealing nothing but myth and legend. While the story of El Dorado does twist, turn and dive even deeper into speculation than we have time for, and despite the vast groups who sought its location, the end is all but the same. But the truth be told, the myth and legend of El Dorado is likely nothing more than an early myth of gold, riches and power told and retold again and again, each time becoming more and more exaggerated and grandiose in detail, as the tale is passed along from those who wrote and spoke of its existence. A misinterpreted whisper, if you will. However, El Dorado as it stands still remains a story, a myth, and a legend. For now, the elusive myth of El Dorado the legend of a lost city of gold is still evading discovery, and whether it ever existed at all is up to the imagination of those who seek to believe in its existence. And whether you believe in it or not, the myth and legend of El Dorado is certainly a worthy lost and forgotten treasure. Well, this has been a fascinating and enthralling story of the lost and forgotten El Dorado. Throughout this elusive journey, we are undoubtedly presented with more questions than answers. At the same time, we have been, and remain, mesmerised by the story. Join me next time for another episode of Lost and Forgotten Treasures. I'm your intrepid storyteller. Lost and Forgotten Treasures is an audio cast written and produced by me, Roger Adams, with the help, of course, from the internet whose archives from multiple contributors have allowed me to research, interpret, and retell these stories. I hope you've enjoyed traveling with me through time, and whether you found some answers, liberated your ears, or merely just found this story intriguing, I hope you'll join me on the next. For now, keep searching for your treasure, whatever it may be. Until next time. <laughs>